uh, the stocks that you, you companies that you want to talk about today, uh, Stephanie, I thought they were interesting. Let's just get right into them. Um, they, they remind sure. me of kind of, are they deep cyclicals? What are these things? They are. They definitely are. I think the economy, that the data that we've been getting uh, for the last several weeks, months, quarters, is better than expected. We're running about 3% GDP. Good on the consumer. We've been talking about the consumer for like a couple of years now. Consumption in the GDP number uh, this week that we got was up 3%. Personal income up almost 5%. Uh, savings up 37 So consumer is just fine. Manufacturing is what we don't talk about that often. And last week, we actually got the S&P Global Manufacturing PMI that actually had new orders, Joe, of 53%. That's a leading indicator. And we know that we, we had the IRA uh, Act passed last year. We have $2 trillion in infrastructure spend that's coming our way this year and over the next couple of years. And so I think you want to own more industrials, more cyclicals. And that's why the names that I've chosen for today uh, is that really that theme. The, uh, the macro uh, picture in the last week, we haven't talked to you. Uh, we have seen a couple of data points that were inter interesting. I think mm -hmm. I, now is inflation back under control. Well, I mean, the inflation, it's the lowest since uh, 2021. Uh, we saw in, in terms of the peak in PCE, core PCE, you, got, you went from uh, 5.6 to 2.8. And so we're making progress. Uh, and so we may not get to that 2%, and then the last mile seems to be a little bit challenging, but we're getting there. And so the Fed is definitely done in terms of raising rates, and now it's just a question of how many times are they going to cut? I don't know if it's two or three times, but they are going to cut. They can cut. The, they have a dual mandate of jobs and inflation, and both give them the, the okay to, to do that. So the, the NASDAQ, we've been talking about it, finally uh, <clears throat> regained all-time high uh, ground, and that's with the benefit of AI. I don't know if we'd be there without, yeah. without the, uh, that, that glow or those animal spirits. What, how, do you, how would you describe what, what technology's been through the last two or three years? Well, it's really amazing, right? I mean, AI, we've been talking about AI for many, many years, but obviously got really jazzed up about it last year uh, as generative AI really took over and gained momentum. It's a trillion dollar total addressable market by 2030, probably at a, at a minimum, Joe. And so you definitely want to have ex, uh, exposure. I'm not sure you want to own, we we've talked about this, I'm not sure you want to go out and buy NVIDIA up 270% in the last year, but there are plenty of names. I mean, you talked about Dell. These numbers were huge last night, and that stock trades at 13 times forward estimates, and you know the numbers are going to go much, much higher. When you have AI orders up 40%, you have a doubling of their backlog in AI. You have a PC cycle that has been dead for the last couple of years that is now starting to see a recovery. I think you can absolutely buy Dell up this much today, and I think you can also buy something like a CDW, which is something that I own, also on the same theme. So, Steph, I don't... You know, I try to remember everything you, you, you say, but, you know, we have a lot of people that come on. I, I know that if there was one trade that almost across the board over the past few years, people always felt safe recommending health care. Well, you know, health care, because yeah. everyone was always going to get older and it was always going to be a place to be. Recently, we've had some people on, I think Savita the other day, talking about there will be some margin compression. It's just, it's just happening. And then we saw some of the regulatory issues may be facing one of the greatest healthcare uh, growth stocks, United Healthcare. Were you, were you yeah. bullish? Didn't you like healthcare in the past? And are you changing? Is, is the, uh, we turned the, uh, hit, have we hit the, what's a nader? Is that the peak of the bike? Have we hit the peak and are we on the <laughs> other side? Uh, healthcare has been really frustrating, and yet you've seen healthcare earnings uh, up about 8% in this past quarter. Uh, so we've had a lot of laggards there, other than biotech. Biotech has actually done really quite nicely. Um, one of my biggest positions, Joe, is GE Healthcare. Uh, it's a spin from GE, uh, and we th I think that the hospital utilization rates are going up. We're seeing it. 
Um, CapEx in, from hospitals are going to be about 2.5%. They've got a great product cycle story, and they, have, they do have a margin improvement story because they're spun out from GE, where they were underinvested when they were part of GE. And so I like spins, as you know. And so I think you want to have, like, kind of so, be selective in healthcare. I don't think you necessarily broad brush. Um, I do think United Healthcare is sort of interesting. Um, especially because it's down a lot in the last couple of days um, on, uh, on, on, on regulatory issues. Um, I think it's uh, a lot of noise, um, and I think they're going to have pricing power. They're not going to let their MLRs go up much more without actually offsetting that with price increases. And so that I, li I like that one, too. I like Bristol-Myers. That's, like, dead on arrival. Uh, the stock is trading at, like, seven times earnings. has a great yield. So I think there are places and pockets within healthcare. But if I have to tell you, I mean, like, I much prefer some of these cyclicals that, you know, we, we were talking about in the, uh, in the beginning of the show. I like this Eaton a lot. I love GE now that they're spinning out Vernova. We knew that that was going to happen, but that's good news that they're getting that past them. I like Masco, love housing. So there's a lot to do in the market beyond tech. I like tech, but there's a lot to do beyond tech. So to recap, Stephanie Link said the consumer is doing just fine. There's also a lot of good economic data coming in recently. She said, we're making a lot of progress on PCE. She said the Fed is definitely done raising rates. Now it's just a matter of how many cuts there will be. Inflation is at the lowest level since 2021. Stephanie recommends industrial and cyclical stocks. She said there will be $2 trillion coming to industrials over the next couple of years. The companies she recommends are GE Healthcare, United Healthcare, Bristol Myers, and General Electric. She believes AI has a minimum of $1 trillion addressable market by 2030. And she's overall bullish. We're seeing a full market broadening now. It's not just the Mag7 and Bid Tech guys. It's, it's broadening into the whole market, which is exactly what we want to see for a sustained rally. Just because AI is affecting tech right now and tech jobs the most doesn't mean it's not going to spread to the rest of the economy, guys. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We're on the road to 1,000, guys. I'm hovering around 900 subscribers. Please hit that subscribe button if you made it this far. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching.